Imagine having all the power of a custom-coded AI agent sitting behind a single, scalable API endpoint in the cloud running 24-7. Well, today, I'm going to show you exactly how to make that. I'm going to take the AI agent that I've been building as a part of my AI agents masterclass series built with LangGraph and LangChain and deploy it to the cloud as an API endpoint using a tool called LangServe, the tool that does all the magic of creating an API wrapper around my AI agent which in my case is a LangGraph app, but you can do this with any LangChain chain. So what I'm about to show you is going to work no matter what agent you have built with LangChain. And this is really important because you cannot be stuck running your AI agents on your local computer forever. At some point you need to deploy it to the cloud. So it's running 24 seven and can scale as well. And the best part about all of this is there's literally only three lines of code that I have to change in my front end, my Streamlit UI, to interact with my new LangServe endpoint. And I'll show you how to do that as well. So here's everything I'm gonna do today. First, I'll walk you through setting up the fast API endpoint for the agent using LangServe. Then I'll go through the three lines of code that we have to change to make our front end work with this new LangServe endpoint. Next, and this is the best part, I will show you step by step how to deploy your AI agent to your own dedicated cloud server using DigitalOcean for literally only $7 a month. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll test out this AI agent now that it's deployed to the cloud and make sure that everything is still working perfectly. All right, so I'll have a link in the description of this video to the GitHub repository where I will have all of the code for the LangServ endpoint and the AI agent that I am showing here. So you're gonna to wanna to clone this locally if you want to make any changes or extend this AI agent. And then obviously also clone it onto your DigitalOcean droplet or whatever cloud instance you have to host your LangServe endpoint. And so there's a few files that we're gonna be going over today before we get into actually deploying it. First, we have the LangServe chatbot script, and this is where we have our Streamlit UI, the front end that we're only gonna be changing three lines of code. Then we also have the file where we define our LangServe endpoints with fast API. And then lastly, we have runnable.py, and that's just where I have my LangGraph app set up with all the nodes defined and all the interactions with the LLM and the tool calls, all that good stuff. And I'll show that very briefly here. I've already worked on this in a separate video on my channel, so you can check that out if you want. Um, but I'm gonna, just going to give a little bit of an overview so you know what I am actually deploying here um, for my example. Then we also have an example environment variable file. So if you want to take a look at how to set up your API keys and define the model that you want to use in the AI agent, all that is neatly laid out here with instructions for every environment variable you'll want to set. And you can also do that in your cloud instance where you host a Langster endpoint. You're going to want to create a .env file and set all that up. And I'll show that when I actually deploy this thing. So really quickly going over the LangGraph code we have here. I have this agent set up that's going to use either an OpenAI, Anthropic, or Grok model depending on the LLM model environment variable. And then I have a bunch of tools that I'm binding into this model to create the agent that I use in my LangGraph app. And so to start out very simply, I'm just gonna use all of my Asana tools that I've been using in my AI Agents Masterclass series. So it's basically just a bunch of CRUD operations for tasks and projects, like updating tasks, getting tasks, uh, creating projects, uh, you know, creating tasks, all that good stuff. These are the tools that I'm giving to my AI agent to do my task management for me or to work alongside with me for it. So at this point, when I bind the tools, I have this chatbot that I can now use in my LangGraph app. And so I have a node simply for calling this model that has the tools bound to it, and then a node for handling any of the tool calls. And then I have this router, this conditional router, where basically if the AI agent says it wants to invoke a tool, then I go to the tool node. Otherwise, I just return the response to the user. So it's a very, very simple LangGraph implementation, but I want something basic because I'm focusing here on showing you how to deploy something, not make some really advanced AI agent. So it's nice and simple for you here. And so defining the workflow, we just have our agent and tool nodes with that conditional edge. I compile it with memory and then return it. And so this is the LangGraph app that executable that I'll be binding into the fast API endpoint to serve this with LangServe. And so you could do something like this with any LangChain chain. So you can extend this to anything that you built with LangChain, like I've already mentioned. And so with that, we can get into our LangServe endpoints. And this is really quick to get through. LangServe makes it so easy to set up these endpoints. And so first, I'm just going to import everything that I need here. The main packages that we're bringing in is Fast API and LangServe, and then also UVCorn for hosting. And so with this, I'm going to also import my function to get the runnable. So I'm importing this function into my LangServe script. 
And then I'm going to create a fast API instance. This is going to be the app that I serve the routes within. And then I'm going to add some middleware here just for cores. You don't have to worry too much about this, but you can set some tight security policies and stuff if you want. So there's a lot that I'm not going to get into here, but with Langserve, you can do all the usual security that you would with API endpoints. And so this is just a bit of a demonstration of that here. And then within my main function, I'll get my lang graph runnable. Again, this could be any lang chain chain or lang graph runnable. And then I will use this function from langserve add routes to basically put the runnable inside my fast API. So this is where we use fast API and bind the routes in from my lang graph runnable. And then with this, literally the last line of code here is just using Ubicorn to run this app. And I'm going to just have it hosted on 0000. 000, 000 with port 8000. And you can play around with this however you want. Just make sure that you change your environment variable that references the endpoint to actually hit your API for your AI agent. And so that is literally it. We have now created our API endpoint. You can run this with Python langserve endpoints.py. And there you go. And that's exactly what we're going to do on our digital ocean droplet. And then in the chat bot here, I promise three lines of code. Here they are. First, we're going to import remote runnable from langserve. Then we're going to get the endpoint URL from the environment variable. And then last of all, instead of getting the runnable directly through the get runnable function that we're now importing for our Langserve endpoint, we're going to set up a remote runnable instance with this URL. And so when we deploy it on DigitalOcean, that will change the environment variable to reference the IP address of our digital ocean droplet. And this is it. We have now done all the code that we need and we can go on over to digital ocean and actually deploy this thing. All right, so here I am in DigitalOcean. I've already skipped through a couple of the really, really easy first steps like signing up and creating your first project within DigitalOcean. Uh, but it just takes a few minutes to do that. So blaze through that and you'll get to this point here where I'm going to show you step by step how to deploy this with Langserve from scratch. I'm literally going to buy a new DigitalOcean droplet just for this demo so you know that I'm doing everything from scratch. So click on the create drop down in the top right here and go to droplets. And then these settings are going to change a lot depending on the amount of memory you want and where you are. Uh, so I'm just going to select the New York region because it's the closest for me. Keep the data center as the same. The default is usually good. And then for the operating system, just sticking with Ubuntu is generally good. Um, same with the basic plan. And then for the droplet, I mentioned $7 a month. And the way that you get that is going to premium AMD, which is usually the default selected, and then going to the $7 a month option. Now, if you want to have more memory to run a Chroma vector database locally, or to store larger files, or maybe you need more than 25 gigabytes, uh, because you are going to be storing a ton of files for RAG, whatever it might be, you can choose a larger one, but generally, this is going to be all you need for this application. And so I'm going to select this, especially just because this is a demo and you can always scale it more later, like I would do if I'm going to take this further. $7 a month is good. And then you can choose either an SSH key or a password for authentication. I believe it typically recommends SSH keys. Passwords, in my mind, are a lot easier to manage. So I typically go with that, especially because it's still really secure as long as your password is good. And they have very strict requirements for passwords. And so I'm just going to paste in one that I have here. There's a couple of requirements that you have to follow. So just keep that in mind. And then that's it. And so now I'll log into my instance with this password going forward. Uh, the rest of the stuff is pretty good. You can give it a nice name as well. So I can say like uh, Langserve AI agent for the name and then any tags that I might want and I'll keep it in my YouTube project. So I'll go ahead and create a droplet and it'll take a little bit to spin this up for you. And so what I'm going to do here is pause and come back once this droplet is ready for me to log into it. Literally 20 seconds later and this droplet is now spun up and ready for me to log into it. So the way that you do that is click on the three dots here, then go to access console, and then you can go ahead and log in as a root. And you can change that user later if you want to as well. So it'll open up a new browser tab here where I am in my Linux instance and we can go ahead and get everything ready to deploy our Langserve API endpoint. And so Git is actually already installed in this machine um, when you spin up the droplet. And so I don't even have to install that. I can just go right ahead to cloning my AI agents masterclass and Git repository. And I can see CD into it, do an LS and see that everything that we have in the GitHub repo is right here in my machine already. So I have a bunch of different commands I'm going to copy and paste into here. So you'll see me looking on my other monitor. I'll also have all these commands in the description of this video. So you can follow along just by copying those as well. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is install Python BNB. 
so that we can create our virtual environment. So it's an optional thing, but creating virtual environments is highly, highly recommended when you work with Python, no matter what environment you're in. So we're gonna go ahead and install this. Um, and yep, super, super quick. There are gonna be a couple of things that are not as quick and we'll get to in a sec, but yeah, that one's nice and quick. So now we'll go ahead and actually create our virtual environment. And the path that you have for this doesn't really matter too much. We just need to create it and then activate it with that path and then make sure that we actually are in that environment. And I'll show what that looks like in a second as well. So there we go, we have it created. And so now I'm going to activate it with the source command. So using that path that we just defined, and here we go. So now we know that we're in the virtual environment because my command line starts with AI agent VNV now, whereas before it didn't. So now if I do a pip list, this is gonna show me the Python packages that I have specifically in this virtual environment. And that's where we're gonna install everything in one of the next steps here. And so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to CD specifically into the folder of my Git repo that has all the code that I've already went over here, like our runnable.py, langserve endpoints.py, and then the langserve chatbot.py. And here is where we can run the command to do the Python package installation for all the packages that we need for langchain, for langserve, for uvcorn, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in here, python or pip install dash r requirements.txt and then no cacheter so that we aren't loading as much in a memory because this droplet only has one gigabyte of memory. Uh, so we need to make it not store all the packages when it um, builds them and in the cache there. So what I'm going to do is pause this video and come back when this installation is complete because it definitely takes a good amount of time to install all of the Python package that we need for this Langserve implementation. All right, so that took a solid five minutes. So it takes a while because there are a lot of Python packages here, but if everything works well, you're gonna see something like this where it says successfully installed and then a bunch of different packages, including all their dependencies. You can also do a quick little pip list if you want to see and make sure that all the packages look good here that are installed. And so with that, next what we can do is create our .env file. So I'll just do nano.env, and that'll bring me into an editor where I can put in all of my environment variables like LLM model, for example, everything that I have in the .env.example file in the GitHub repo. So I'm obviously not going to fill this out on camera because it's gonna have all my API keys and stuff. So I'm gonna pause the video and come back when this is done. All right, so it just took me like 10 seconds. It'll probably take you a little bit longer if you have to go fetch your API keys and stuff, but it shouldn't be too bad. And then we can move on to the next step, which is setting up our firewall. So before we can actually run our Langserve endpoint, we need to open up the firewall so that that port 8000 is actually available for external machines like our laptops to connect into the droplet and reach the API endpoint. So there's three commands that we have to run here. The first one is sudo ufw enable. Uh, because we have to actually enable the firewall. And then the next one is sudo ufw allow and then 8000 or whatever the port is that you have set up for your Langserve endpoint. So if you didn't change the code that I gave you at all, it would be 8000. That's what I have for mine. So allow 8000. And then now that the rule is added, we just need to do a sudo ufw reload and it'll say that the firewall is reloaded. So now we have that new configuration and the port is opened up into our droplet for inbound traffic. And so now that is literally all we need to do. So we can go ahead and run our Langserve endpoint. So I'll just say Python Langserve endpoints.py. And if everything works well, we'll see that nice little Langserve message like this saying that we are good to go. And so now what I can do to actually verify that this is working before I even update my front end to reach this endpoint is I can test it out in my browser. So what I wanna do is copy the IPv4 from my digital ocean droplet. So I'll copy that go into a new tab, paste that, go to port 8000 slash docs. So slash docs is an endpoint that is made available for any Langserve runnable, basically. And so with this, if you have everything set up right, you're gonna see a page that looks just like this, where we get some documentation here. And it doesn't really matter what we see here. I'm not gonna go over this. So this is just to see that it is working. So now we can go over to our front end code and change it to point to this endpoint and test it out. So the very last thing, we just need to test this out in our front end and make sure we can actually reach this endpoint and talk to our AI agent, just like we did before we are hosting the LangGraph app on our local computer. And so we have everything set up already, changed up for this endpoint in our front end code here. And so we just have this agent endpoint URL and I need to update that. And so you'll go into your .env, I'm just gonna show the example env so I'm not showing my secrets. And you go to the agent endpoint URL 
and you would just paste in the IPv4 that you got from the digital ocean droplet, the same thing that I copied before when I did that slash docs test in the browser. Note that this does have to be HTTP, not HTTPS. In a more advanced tutorial, maybe I'll go into setting up SSL and stuff, but for now, I just wanted to keep it really, really basic. Um, I also don't have any authentication on this endpoint or anything, but like I showed with cores and stuff, you can easily set that up just like you would with any API endpoint. So this is very, very basic. It's just an unencrypted HTTP endpoint, but you can definitely make this as secure as you would want. And I could even make a tutorial on that later if enough people are interested in that, but you can always figure it out yourself. So anyway, with that, I'm going to pause here actually set this in my .env and then we'll run it and test out this agent. And we can go ahead and start talking to our AI agent just like we did when the LangGraph endpoint was hosted on our computer. And so I'm gonna make a very simple tool request here. I'll just say, what projects do I have in Asana? And we can actually watch the output if I go to my droplet here. So you can see there's nothing at this point besides it recognizing the call to slash docs. So I'm gonna go back to my browser, make this request. We'll get the response from the agent. There we go, I got YouTube, fitness, business, personal encoding. This is actually what I have for my projects in Asana. And then I'll go back over to my digital ocean droplet. And sure enough, we got all of the usual standard output that we had when we were running this in the terminal on our laptop. So you can see all the different projects that it got from the Asana API call, all the different print statements that we have in our graph execution. Everything is working perfectly. So we now have this deployed running in the cloud 24 seven, all the power of this AI agent behind an API endpoint. So I hope that was super, super easy for you to follow along and learn how you can deploy any AI agent built with LangChain super easily using LangServe. If you have any questions about any of the steps at all, just put a comment below and I would love to help you out because I want to make sure that everybody who watches this, including you, can get through this very, very easily. Like I also mentioned, I'm gonna have all of the steps that I went through in my digital ocean droplet in the description of this video as well. So you can feel free to copy anything that you want. I'll have the link to the repo as well. So everything that you need will be available for you. If you appreciated this step-by-step -step walkthrough, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. And with that, I will see you in the next video.